From the Ted Bundy tapes to the Jeffrey Dahmer story, we love watching creepy crime stories. There are podcasts, movies, and Golden Globe shows in this genre. Why are we so captivated by these real-life horror stories, especially when we're dealing with so much stress? Well, part of the appeal lies in the familiar narrative formula that many of these shows follow. It's like a cozy blanket of conflict and resolution for us viewers. First, a terrible crime goes down, leaving behind clues that we can't help but get involved with. We get a front row seat to forensic analysis and detective work, as if solving a puzzle alongside them. And finally, the ultimate satisfaction comes when the despicable person is found and brought to justice. It's a simple yet infallible formula that keeps us hooked and strangely satisfied. On top of that, murder reinforces a strong sense of moral clarity. When we see the criminal's cold expression, we cringe and shudder at the horrors the victim endured. And let's face it, we want to see the evildoers behind bars. And let's not forget how murder shows remind us of our own luck in life. We see all these victims smiling, full of life. The series might be tough to watch because they hit too close to home. Or they can provide some weird comfort by highlighting how much worse things could be. After all, we spot evidence bags and crime scenes after seeing the pictures of the victims' smiling faces. It's like a reality check that grounds us and makes us grateful for what we have. This content can give you a rush like horror movies, making you experience the twisted forms of behavior and trauma from a safe distance. It can be a bit insensitive and exploitative to watch these shows as if they're pure entertainment. I mean, real people and their families are out there grieving. It's not some show for our amusement. Now, there's one aspect that's easier to understand and less dehumanizing. Our inner detective coming out to play. We all want to solve these cases without going through police training. That's why you see those Reddit groups and online chat boards filled with armchair detectives sharing theories and piecing together clues from these shows and real-life info they dig up from the internet and social media. Sometimes, this crowdsourcing actually helps catch the offenders. Another reason we're hooked on true crime shows is because they tap into our deepest fears about the presence of selfish, dark, and evil impulses lurking within people we trust or even love. By watching out for warning signs and sociopathic behaviors in those wolves in sheep's clothing, we think we can educate and protect ourselves from falling victim to sketchy characters. But here's the thing. Sometimes there are no warning signs. Some of these people lead seemingly normal lives before their inner psychopath emerges. Despite all our armchair psychology, this unsettling truth shakes true crime fans to the core. It makes us question if anyone, under certain circumstances, could become a criminal. We could also be driven into this genre because of our increasing disconnection and numbness in a world driven by technology, where genuine human connections feel harder to come by. But there's another critical question. Is it normal to like these shows? Is it normal to binge watch one of those shows and go straight to bed? A mental health expert named Dr. Thema Bryant says consuming violent media like true crime shows might have a deeper reason behind it. It could be because the trauma depicted in those shows feels familiar to some individuals. She recommended that we deeply think about why trauma calms us. Things might not be quite okay if we find relaxation when watching three episodes of Law & Order before going to sleep. Hold on! Dr. Bryant explained that some of us grew up in high-stress environments, so we may mistake peace for feeling bored. To truly find peace within ourselves, we must embrace discomfort because it will feel unfamiliar. Exploring why trauma survivors might be drawn to true crime stories is interesting. This time, Dr. Elizabeth Jeglick shared her thoughts. She mentioned that many people with a history of mental illness are attracted to the field of psychology to understand and heal themselves. Similarly, individuals who have experienced trauma may find comfort in true crime because it allows them to re-experience those situations in a safe environment with more control. You know, there's this quirky thing called morbid curiosity. 
It's when people have this strange fascination with unpleasant things. This level of curiosity is a bit more serious than us wondering about the end of a true crime, though. It's like our minds have this peculiar way of dealing with the morbid stuff. Psychologists have this idea that our curiosity about morbid events stems from our need for excitement and new experiences. You know, that itch for some stimulation and thrill in life? Okay, back to the crime series. Is it okay to romanticize crimes? Because these days, all offenders are A-list, good-looking actors. Why do casting directors always opt for more attractive actors when it comes to real-life criminals? It all boils down to psychology. As an audience, we tend to gravitate towards media that pleases our aesthetic senses. This makes filmmakers and TV producers mindful of their actors' physical appeal. Throughout history, it's also been revealed that people like Jeffrey Dahmer and Ted Bundy weren't exactly hideous monsters in appearance, despite their monstrous actions. After all, true crime shows and movies shed light on historical crimes. Everyday ordinary people are affected by various types of crime and violence perpetrated by seemingly normal individuals. Without the media and news outlets, the stories of these monsters would remain untold and hidden from the world. So as much as we may criticize the portrayal of these criminals, they bring awareness to the darker side of our society. So, is it empowering to tell such stories, or is it a slippery slope for viewers' minds? Okay, true crime has been around for ages, ever since Truman Capote's book, In Cold Blood, became a hit back in the 60s. Since then, we've been fascinated with these crimes and all their details. On average, true crime enthusiasts watch around 84 episodes of crime TV shows each year. The directors who produce these shows and documentaries have a purpose behind it all. They want to educate us, not necessarily influence us. They try to entertain us while also shedding light on the dangers of crime. They know how to create compelling characters that attract a wider audience. While enjoying true crime is totally fine, romanticizing it isn't cool. There's a clear line between being interested in the genre and idolizing the actual criminals themselves. Unfortunately, some people blur that line and sympathize with these murderers. There's something called hybristophilia, which is the attraction to criminals. There are fan edits for Zac Efron's portrayal of Ted Bundy in Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil and Vile. Both the audience and the creators of true crime media play a role in this. Conventionally attractive actors portray these evil people. The audience likes them, some other series do the same thing, and so on. It blurs the lines between the actor and the actual criminal. Also, a study conducted in 2010 discovered that women tend to be more interested in true crime stories than men. They're especially into stories that give them a peek into the minds of criminals and spill the details of how the victims managed to escape. I mean, what happened to them is genuinely heartbreaking. Sometimes we get goosebumps. These shows dive deep into some seriously messed up stories. We're talking about the worst of the worst. In reasonable and safe limits, we might like watching true crime content. It's become a massive industry, generating billions of dollars every year. We can continue exploring the thrill behind true crime and satisfying our curiosity while still being aware of the boundaries.